says I'm live. <laughs> Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for July 25th. July 25th is the 206th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 207th in leap years with 159 days remaining to the end of the year. I think we had a big old full moon like last night, maybe, or maybe the night before. But anyway, let's have a moon word today. It's meniscus. Meniscus is a noun that means the curved surface of a column of liquid or something having a crescent shape or a lens that is concave on one side and convex on the other or a thin cartilage disc between bones and a joint, such as in a knee or a wrist, meniscus. Meniscus comes to us from Latin, Greek before that, from a word that meant crescent and was a diminutive of a word that meant moon. First documented use of the word meniscus was 1686. And I might have an example of meniscus. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. This is a a resin coaster that I poured and whenever you pour resin, it does go right up the side of the mold and create a meniscus. Now I've, I've trimmed this one a little bit with a knife, not very well, <laughs> but it forms a meniscus there. Meniscus, that's today's word. All righty, moving on. On July 25th in the year 306, Constantine I was proclaimed Roman emperor by his troops. Constantine ruled until his death in the year 337, so he was around to see it when nine years later, on July 25th in the year 315, the Arch of Constantine was completed near the Colosseum in Rome to commemorate Constantine I's victory over Maxentius at the Melvian Bridge. This is a triumphal arch com commemorating the aforementioned victory. And about 601 years after that, on July 21st, 1261, the city of Constant Constantinople was recaptured by Nicene forces establishing the Byzantine Empire. The ebb and flow of humanity and municipalities and so on. Oh, darn, where's my coffee? Okay, well, we'll get coffee in a minute. On July 25th, 1603, James VI of Scotland was crowned King of England as James I of England, bringing the Kingdom of England and the Kingdom of Scotland into what's called personal union. That's a case where uh, two or more states have the same ruler, the same monarch, but their boundaries, laws, and interests remain distinct. So they were still England and Scotland, separate countries, but with one ruler. Political union would occur 104 years later in 1707. It's hard to resist my apparent obsession with earthquakes, so I'll just go ahead and tell you that on July 25th, 1668, a magnitude 8.5 earthquake struck eastern China. Over 40,000 40, people lost their lives in that one. It was on this day in 1788 that Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart entered into his catalog the completion of one of the his most beloved work, Symphony No. 40 in G minor, sometimes called the Great G Minor Symphony. It was written in the final years of his life when things were not going well. An infant daughter had died a few weeks earlier. He'd moved into a cheaper apartment. He was begging friends and acquaintances for loans. But he wrote his last three symphonies in the summer of 1788, Symphony No. 39 in E-flat, Symphony in G minor and the Jupiter Symphony. It's not known for sure whether Mozart ever actually got to hear any of these symphonies performed. This is the birthday of Maxfield Parrish, born July 25th, 1870. He was an American painter and illustrator with an art career that lasted a good half century. 
He began drawing as a child for his own amusement, and his parents encouraged him. He uh, produced almost 900 pieces of art, including calendars, greeting cards, magazine covers, also illustrated books and book covers, and much, much more. Most of his early works were in black and white, but I'm glad he did eventually move into color. And the thing about that is that it was, uh, I, I think, I think it was when he had tuberculosis. He had tuberculosis and uh, he had to stay in for a while. And while he was recovering from illness, he was recovering from some kind of illness when he learned how to uh, mix oil paints and glazes. And so that was uh, the beginning of his move into color. And I'm sure glad that he did. He does did beautiful work. The largest body of his works can be found at the National Museum of American Illustration in Newport, Rhode Island. Maxfield Parrish developed arthritis in the 1950s and was no longer able to paint by 1960. He died in 1966 at the age of 95. He was greatly admired by Norman Rockwell, by the way. On July 25, 1897, 21-year-old Jack London set off for the Klondike Gold Rush. He developed scurvy and severe muscle pain, but he didn't, and and he didn't make any money. <laughs> he developed scurvy, muscle pain, and he didn't make any money. But he was inspired by the adventurous lifestyle, and he wrote about it. Five years later, his book, The Call of the Wild, made him suddenly famous. This is the birthday of writer and philosopher Eric Hoffer, born July 25th, 1902. In reading about him, I thought I need to go find some of his work and read it. It looks pretty interesting. One of the things he said, here's, a, here's an Eric Hoffer quote. When people do as they please, they usually imitate each other. Eric Hoffer lived to the age of 80. On July 25, 1956, in a heavy fog, the SS Andrea Doria collided with the MS Stockholm, 45 miles off Nantucket Island. Having learned the lessons from the sinking of the Titanic, there were plenty of lifeboats on board. Unfortunately, Andrea Doria listed so badly to starboard, that meant that the lifeboats on the port side were too high in the air to be usable. Because of this, 51 people were unable to escape and went down with the ship. This is the birthday of Louise Brown. Now, I said 51 people. That was out of like 1,700, so it wasn't everybody. All righty, let's move on to the next item. This is the birthday of Louise Brown, born July 25th, 1978. She's the first baby conceived by in vitro insemination or uh, IVF, in vitro insemination, IVF. In vitro means in glass. So for years, she was referred to as the first test tube baby. She was born in Oldham, Great Britain in 1978 to uh, Leslie and John Brown. They'd been trying to conceive a child for nine years and Leslie had blocked fallopian tubes, so her eggs were unable to get to the uterus to be fertilized. They tried several doctors, and finally the Browns were referred to uh, doctors Steptoe and Edwards. Steptoe and Edwards had been working on alternative methods of conception since 1966, and all they, although they had been successful with a version of in vitro fertilization performed on animals, they had not up to that point been able to duplicate the results in humans. They could fertilize the egg, but the resulting embryos only survived a few weeks after they were returned to their mother's bodies. So this time the doctors began the process in the usual way. They retrieved the egg, they mixed it with the daddy's sperm, allowed the fertilized egg to divide for a few days in a special solution, but this time they decided to transfer the fertilized egg back into Leslie's uterus after only two and a half days, rather than waiting four or five as they had done previously. This time the embryo survived 
And Leslie had a fairly uneventful pregnancy until the very end when her blood pressure became very high. That happens sometimes. And the uh, doctors decided to deliver the baby by cesarean section. Louise Joy Brown was born at 11.47 p.m. and she weighed five pounds and 12 ounces. Louise was followed four years later by her sister Natalie, also conceived by IVF. Natalie was the 40th IVF baby and the first one to have a baby herself, which she did in 1999. The Concord. The Concord was the first supersonic commercial passenger plane traveling at twice the speed of sound. Its first flight was March 2nd, 1969, but the Concorde cost so much to develop that it never made any money. Noisy and expensive to operate, eventually all routes were cut except to and from New York. On July 25th, 2000, there was a terrible crash of a Concorde outside of Paris, which killed all 109 people aboard, plus four people on the ground. Eventually, all flights of the Concorde would stop in 2003. And that's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something you didn't know before. I know I sure did. As always, links to my sources are included below. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your messaging, email, or social media. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Now we go look for the thank you very much button. And thank you very much. <laughs>